I have gone out of my way to develop myself for leadership. Um, I came here from a course that I'm currently attending at Phillips Consulting. I've done other courses at uh, Harvard Kennedy School of Government, at LSE, and at Lagos Business School. I'm very keen on self-development. Um, but this sort of takes me to a point that uh, both you and Aisha made in terms of mentorship. One of the things that has helped me um, is the fact that I have quite a number of mentors in the political space. Now, I acknowledge that as a privilege um, and it's not something that most young politicians have access to. Um, so it's one of the things that I would push for um, to, to make sure that we see more young people running, running for office. Um, how were you able to get the mentors that you have? Um, so I, I sort of go out of my way. Um, I'm sure that uh, His Excellency, the celebrant, uh, will remember that whenever I see him, I, I say good evening or good afternoon to him. Um, and sometimes he remembers who is saying hello, sometimes he doesn't. So I do introduce myself again. And I do that with many of, uh, of the people who I look up to as leaders. Um, I've worked with some of them in, when I was in legal practice because I used to volunteer on election petitions. Um, so it, it does take a very conscious effort and it's not something that comes naturally to everyone. Um, so I do hope that also from the other side, that the people that we look up to also sort of push and meet us halfway, um, especially for those who are not, perhaps not as confident or are not as uh, passionate to push for, for some of these things. It's very interesting. I mean, you talk about volunteering on uh, election petition tribunals and that might be where you have gotten to meet some of these people. But let me come, come to you, Mr. Asukwo, um, Mr. Ekwayong, rather. You are the Commissioner for Finance in Cross River State. Um, and I know that inevitably, you will definitely get involved in politics. How would you say, because I also want to imagine that you're coming, you, for you to be Commissioner for Finance, you must have some experience managing money, perhaps somewhere most likely in the private sector. How would you say that the brand of politics, because Mrs. Awoshika also talked about the brand of Nigeria, not being a positive one to identify with. And I think the same goes a lot for politics. When any child or any young person says, I want to get involved in politics, um, the image is not too good, sadly. How would you say that you were able to overcome that image of politics and get involved? Thank you very much, Maupe. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Happy birthday, Your Excellency. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today. What you've asked is a very, um, very important question. You see, the way you um, youth can get involved in politics as we speak right now is um, either through elective office, running for elective office, or through appointment. Now, if you run for elective office, um, we thank God the threshold for running has been reduced. But when you run for elective office, there's um, there's a brand of politics that's practiced in Nigeria sometimes, which is um, the, the politics of money, money politics. And that serves as a barrier to entry for youth into elective office because you need to have the capital to be able to get involved most of the time. And for appointive, most of the time, it requires the goodwill of the principal, whether the president in appointing ministers or the governor. And so that serves as a barrier to entry as well because the power doesn't really lie with um, the individual or the person seeking for office. What I feel, as youth, we need to do is more participation, and not participation in the sense of everyone trying to run for office, but participation in the polls, in determining how your officers are elected. So I say that to say this, the youth demographic, as defined in Nigeria, accounts for approximately 60 million of the population. Now, if these 60 million people were to come together, even a 10% of that population, 6 million, comes together and can articulate what they want, what they need, they can be a voting block that can decide their own faith. And so when they see youth, not just any youth, but youth with capacity to hold office, they can support that youth and vote him into office. Beyond that, you can also have a seat at the negotiation table when electing your candidates. Let's say you're electing a governor or president. You say you want 
so also amount of representation. You want so many seats at the table and so, so, so amount of offices. I believe that that is one way. So the most important thing is for youth to participate, get involved in the process, get the PVCs, understand, start having discussions and be able to articulate what exactly they want for themselves. Well, there's a lot of activism on social media. I mean, all you have to do is, if you have a Twitter page, tweet about, you know, politics and see how many followers you get or how many responses you get. Uh, but then people will say that it will seem that it's happening mostly on social media. Are we getting past that? Or would you say that it's still on social media? Thank you. Thank you very much for that observation. The truth of the matter is it's mostly on social media. There's a lot of activism, but it's online. When you check the pages and the Twitter handles and the Facebook groups and um, the Instagram comments, what do you find? You find people criticizing the government or the principles, but you don't find people saying, we're having this meeting. Let's all meet here, let's discuss, let's all come together. What you, what you would want as a narrative on social media is people grouping together to discuss meetings happening, rallies happening, protests or what have you. But there needs to be, that, that social media activism has to translate into the physical space. And that is where you would have true change. I think the question is how? Uh, perhaps Mr. Obira will be able to help us out with the how. Uh, you know, people will say talk is easy, but when it comes to action, it will seem that a lot of people step back. And sometimes it will seem that young people are still very consumed with bread and, getting bread and butter for everyday living, uh, rather than getting involved in politics. You still, first of all, want to make a living. After all, that's why your parents sent you to school. How do you think we can come out of that mode of, oh, I started school, you know, you're born, you start school, you finish, you get a job, and that's what your parents want you to do, or at least that's what you want to do until you finally make it in life, so to speak. How do you think we can break that mode, that there's so much more that can be done? Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Maope, thank you very much. Uh, your Excellency, happy birthday. I bring green things from Anambra State. Um, my uh, friend and brother, Ebeyong, just mentioned something, that there are two ways to get into government, which is elective position, uh, going through the elections, and also appointed. Basically, let me use Anambra State as an example. The governor of Anambra State, ten, uh, more than 50% of his uh, appointees are people below the ages of 35. So that shows you that he wants the youth to be part of government. Now, the second part you asked about, how do the youth get involved because of their, their focus is on bread and butter? Uh, you see a lot which of youth... Which is not youth, a bad thing, really. Yeah, which is not a bad thing. You see a lot of youth talk about their PVC. But you see, party politics is not about PVC. So at the point where you need to 